run free and dive into the sky Hear the wind crying out its prayer While we are so ashamed to be alive Break the chains and our freedom is ours to take Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Everyone has been asking me to publish another garage sale finds slash eBay finds video and I thought today would be the perfect opportunity to do so because I am snowed in at the moment. There's about seven inches of snow on the ground uh, right now in Virginia Beach, Virginia and that just shut everything down. I'm crossing my fingers because I'm hoping that the power does not go out. Hopefully I will be able to finish this video without a power outage because if the power goes out, I can't test this PC out and I have to hold off. Uh, on this entire video. So crossing my fingers right now. Anyway, right in front of me, I have an HP Thin Client. I bought this a while ago along with that Seneca uh, Nextlink client that I bought off eBay for like seven bucks. Um, if you wanna check out that video, the link will be down in the description. And if you wanna check out the seller where I got this PC from, by the way, I bought this for $11 off eBay plus shipping. I bought it from Maven Technologies. I will put a link to their store down in the description as well because they have some pretty interesting stuff um, and all of it's very reasonably priced by the way. Now, before I get down to business, I just wanna give you guys a quick background as to why exactly I bought this little thin client. Now I purchased this as a possible successor to my current web server. Currently I have a uh, HP Core 2 Two dual machine sitting in the back with two 250 gigabyte hard drives in a mirrored configuration and that hosts the uh, AACAT archive site along uh, with some back-end stuff like the behind the scenes videos. Now since I have expanded the duties of that web server I don't think uh, this little PC is going to be enough to serve as my web server now. Uh, this thing has a gigabyte of RAM in it, an Intel Atom uh, N280, which is a single core hyper-threaded processor, I believe. I might be wrong about that. And if I am, I will correct myself as this video goes on. Uh, I don't think this is going to be powerful enough to uh, run everything that the web server is currently running now because as I said uh, lately I have been expanding the duties of that server. Now, speaking of behind the scenes, behind the scenes episode three is now up. A lot of you have noticed some difference in the audio quality and video quality, and that's because I have bought a new camera. I am now using a Nikon D5300 instead of a Nikon D3300 to film. Uh, and if you wanna hear more about that, you can go ahead and check out behind the scenes episode three. The link to that will be down in the description. Now, I'm sure you guys are antsy to uh, take a look at this thing. Of course, I will take the top off and we will take a peek under the hood. Not really sure how to take this apart yet. I will figure it out as this video goes on. Uh, but first, let's take a quick look around the outside of this PC, which shouldn't take too long. It's pretty tiny. Let's just take a quick look around this thing because as I said earlier, this is a pretty small machine and there's really not too much to look at. Dimensions are approximately 10 inches by 1.7 inches by 8.7 inches. If anyone was curious on the front, you can see uh, jacks for audio in and audio out, two USB 2.0 ports along with the power button up here and the HP logo. As you can see, this thing is missing the side panel and that's really not that big of a deal because once again, I just plan to use this as a server and no one would have ever saw this. And then on the back, we have uh, even more IO. So we have four USB 2.0 ports, ethernet ports. Uh, interestingly enough, there's a display port on this thing, VGA out, uh, PS2 for keyboard and mouse serial, along with the power jack. I had to go digging for a uh, power supply to run this thing, but I finally found one, thank goodness. And I think that's about it as far as external features are concerned. Let's crack this thing open and see what's inside. So my mind has kind of been blown right now because I did not expect to see all of this inside this little thin client. I mean, check this out. We have a full PCI Express X16 slot in here. Who would have thought? I mean, I would have never thought they would have included that in a PC this small, but here it is. Um, we have SATA right here. Didn't expect to see SATA. 500 megabytes of built-in flash. I believe this is using an IDE interface. We will test out the speeds of this when I boot into Windows. And yes, I'm going to boot into Windows 7 off a USB flash drive just for testing purposes. Uh, what else is here? We have a gig of DDR3 RAM or Intel Atom processors 
this right here, you can see there's a heat pipe running out here to a passive heat sink. There are no fans inside the system, so it's nice and quiet, uh, low power as well. This is really cool right here. We have two hidden USB 2.0 ports. So I guess if you wanna take a uh, wireless, a USB wireless dongle and use it on this machine, you can hide it away here and no, no one's gonna mess around with it. No one's gonna unplug it and steal it and walk away with it. So that's, that's really neat. Um, I think that's really about it. It's really packed for a thin client like this. I mean, I might just keep this around to experiment with, you know, uh, GTX 1080 inside uh, HP thin client with N280 processors. I mean, that's a little bit over, that's way overkill, um, but it'll be fun just to try that. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff I could just mess around with uh, with regards to this PC. It's just really, really neat little uh, thin client. It is pretty under underpowered because of that uh, N280 processor, but Wow, did not expect to see that much inside this thing. Hey guys, as you guys can see, I have a little test setup ready to go. I have our 19 volt power adapter on standby. I'm going to plug it in and see if anything goes pop. Hopefully uh, uh, everything goes a-okay here. There's our power jack. So it is hooked up now. And a blue LED came on behind the power light, and wow, look at that. It's already trying to boot up. I don't think anything's installed on this yet. Uh, there is no operating in, there is no operating system installed on this little mini PC, uh, but I will go to the BIOS, and once again, we will run Windows 7 off a USB flash drive. I'm in the BIOS, and eh, there's really nothing too interesting here. If I go into system information, you can see the system model number. This is the HP T5740. Uh, you can see that we have an Intel N280 processor in here running at 1.66 gigahertz. Uh, processor speed. Oh yeah, just hit that. Uh, memory size is one gigabyte and that's really about it. If I go down to standard CMOS features, you can see uh, that it is indeed detecting that 512 megabytes of flash we have inside this thing. And once again, I will run uh, like crystal disk mark properly on that and see how fast it is. Probably not mind blowing. And yeah, I'm just going to scroll through here and not read anything off because there's nothing, you know, eye catching. And we're going to exit without saving and boot into Windows, which I installed on this 128 gigabyte flash drive. So I have Windows 7 up and running on this machine now, but I had to go back into the BIOS to change the system time. And I just realized that this computer has the most annoying error beep I have ever heard. Well, at least we know that the system speakers are working, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and play that. Prepare yourselves. That is very annoying and loud. I finally have Windows installed on this thing, and I've been using it for about the past 15 minutes, and I'm not too impressed. It's about what I expected. It's pretty darn slow. Now, you have to keep in mind that we are running this off a USB flash drive, but I do not think the USB flash drive is the bottleneck in this case. You have to keep in mind that this system is really just meant to be an embedded system. Um, it's not a performance beast in anyway uh and you know using it as a day-to-day -day driver it would probably be a tad bit painful but as you can see as promised i did run crystal disk mark on the built-in flash and yeah it, it speaks for itself it's uh it's pretty slow nothing nothing to wow at there i mean as far as being a uh, small form factor system doesn't consume that much power at all. I think sitting idle, uh, it takes, uh, I think about 15 watts and uh, I'll break out my infrared thermometer here in a second, but it's barely warm to the touch right now. So I did install Google Chrome. We'll try some web browsing in just a second. And I had a little mix up earlier because I accidentally downloaded the German version of Windows 7 and that put me about an hour and a half behind. I downloaded the wrong image from the digital river mirror uh, and now I have the English version. So that took me a long time. As you can see, it is not activated because I don't have a code for it. So we're just using it uh, on its trial period. Uh, but, you know, everything's working just fine and it's perfect for demonstration purposes. I have Task Manager open right here. And as you can see, animations are actually surprisingly smooth. We're using uh, Intel Integrated Graphics within this thing. Eh, those animations are not that bad. Uh, 1280 by uh, 1024 resolution at this moment. And you can see that uh, nearly sitting idle, as you, we have a couple things open right here, but nearly sitting idle, we're using about half a gig of RAM and CPU usage really isn't too bad right now. So we're gonna close out of all of this. I will pop open the file manager, just browse through some files real quick to show you that everything's working a-okay. New volume. That's not the one that we want. That is our flash memory. That doesn't have anything on it. 
So it went to USB, program files, and go around here. As you can see, yeah, just browsing through the file system. It's relatively responsive. We'll open up the uh, start menu right here and see if we can find WordPad. WordPad, and that was nice and smooth. Pop that open, and that opened relatively quick. So type in the good old generic phrase, hello, YouTube. And as you can see, you know, just as a basic word processing machine, it's actually not too bad. So we'll change the size to font, to italicize it, make it bold, underline it. Hey, let's change the color to a nice orange. That's working all fine and dandy, actually. Uh, pretty responsive as far as that task is concerned. The web browsing experience on this thing is pretty poor. Google Chrome opens up within a reasonable amount of time, but besides that, everything else is just slow, as I said. So we're going to navigate to YouTube right now, www.youtube.com. As you can see, I already punched it in earlier, and I know how long it takes to load and how painful it is to use. Trust me, it is not a pleasant experience. So as you can see, it loaded up within a decent amount of time, but as more things start to load up here, um, the page continuously becomes less and less responsive. And as you can see, I'm trying to scroll down and nothing's happening. Are we starting to get somewhere? Did I close the ad? There we go. So once that ad has been closed, you know, it's somewhat responsive. Uh, scrolling is a bit jerky, uh, but it works. And we will play back a video in just a second. And by the way, the integrated speakers on this thing uh, do work. Or I guess I should say speaker because there's only one speaker in here. So now we're going to try some multitasking. I'll pop up with my site. All right, and while this is loading, I do want to bring something up. So earlier I had some B-roll uh, of this system in the snow, and I know I'm going to get some uh, stark comments. Uh, some people saying that, oh, you know, you could have completely destroyed that computer. That was so reckless, you know, putting that system in the snow. And no, 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 that that does not matter. Those people have never taken a motherboard, video card, RAM, a CPU, actually not a CPU, I take the CPU back, but motherboard, RAM, um, and video card and tossed it into a dishwasher to wash them. Yes, I've tried that experiment. Yes, everything comes out completely fine. No, the system was not in danger by being in the snow, so. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end that argument right there. And as you can see, my website loaded up. It has a couple ads on it, and it's actually handling them okay. This is kind of close to what I would classify as semi-usable. As you can see, scrolling is a bit jerky, but it's definitely doable. I mean, you can use this to read through this article right here. And we'll pop open another tab, navigate to my archive site. www.acatarchives.com and there we go that loaded up just fine so yeah basic web browsing handles it okay now we're gonna get we're gonna give it a little challenge now you guys know the website that i like to visit to give my systems a little kick and that's www.cnn.com and that's because cnn.com is just a mess unless they improved it for 2017 which i doubt they did still not responsive the page has completely locked up at this point, not getting anything. Yeah, we just lost it. Uh, Google Chrome is not responding, so we killed it. This computer cannot handle CNN, and I, I don't blame it. I don't blame it. <laughs> and finally, to end this little demo, here is video playback at 240p, and I think I'll try to bump it up to 480p, but I think that's the best we're going to get. And I'll also put the microphone right next to the tiny, tiny little speaker, which uh, struggles with this, by the way. It sounds awful while trying to play back this video because that speaker's just so small, but uh, I'll give you a little audio sample too, which uh, might completely destroy your ears. So uh, uh, brace yourselves. Yeah, so listening to audio on that tiny little speaker sounds like a bee got stuck in there. It's uh, not really audible at all. You can't tell what I'm saying. Now I'll bump it up to 480, but once again, mm, it's, yeah, it's okay. It's dropping frames all over the place. I'm not going to try to bump it up to HD because that's just a waste of time. So that is going to be about it for this video. Ooh, and I just got the black screen from not activating Windows. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. You know, overall, it wasn't too bad of a system for 11 bucks. It was a lot of fun to play around with, and I uh, think it has some potential for some videos in the future. It might throw in a uh, powerful GPU along with a solid state drive, uh, more RAM if I'm can i'm not sure if i can accept more than one gigabyte i will have to look into that uh, but this might be featured in the near future if you want to check this thing out or 
I guess if you want to check the seller out that sold this to me, you can go ahead uh, and check that link out down in the description. I keep saying check. Um, anyway, guys. Oh, and don't forget to take a look at the December giveaway. I extended it to January 15th. I think. Um, so you guys still have time to enter. I'm giving away one of those uh, icy dock, really beefy driving closures. I think they're valued at like around hundred bucks. They're really, really nice driving closures. And I will be giving one of those away to one lucky subscriber. Don't forget to uh, watch episode three of behind the scenes. And I don't think I'm forgetting anything at this point. So once again, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, you can go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology, which will probably be a subscriber update since I do need to announce uh, the giveaway winners next weekend.